according to Clive Staples Lewis, a British writer, two heads or more are better than one. Not because either is infallible, but because they are unlikely to go wrong in the same direction. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Last Mile with Naka. I am Adesu Aosui. The combined efforts of the government of Nigeria through the leadership of the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, the Global Fund, and the United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFA, in what is called the National Alignment on HIV Response, has yielded remarkable results. Stay with us to find out more on this. The HIV Alignment Agreement between the Government of Nigeria, United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, and the Global Fund is one that defines roles and responsibilities, essentially contributing to improved coordination and reduced duplication of efforts in the national HIV response. What national alignment simply means is that in the past, we have three different programs, all supporting the national response. We have the United States President um, program on AIDS sleep, PEFA. We have the Global Fund to fight HIV, tuberculosis and malaria. And then we have the Government of Nigeria. All these programs have resources. All these programs are implementing, um, uh, are implemented at the grassroots, at the state level, and all these programs have teams. However, what we get to realize over time is that there are duplications in the way we work. And the purpose of the alignment is to minimize those duplications, to have a one national response, one national program that we are going to call the national response to HIV. And that national response to HIV encompasses all the stakeholders that are supporting the national response. The program led by PAFA is part of it, the Global Fund is part of it, and the government of Nigeria is part of it, and is led by the government. So now we have one national program um, that we now give account instead of three different programs that we give account. In essence, the spirit of the alignment has essentially been that all three partners trying to implement this one agenda that we've always had. We've always understood the three ones, NACA um, being the principal coordinating agency, um, having one M&E system, and say also having one national program. Um, but the way we were working before did not look like we were doing that. So the alignment gave us an opportunity to come back to that agenda. And now the way we look at the program under the alignment is that, look, we sit down together and agree as stakeholders what the priorities of the program are. We, dis we determine how best to position the available resources from all partners um, in such a way that we can get the most effective outcomes in terms of people that are getting on treatment, in terms of all the other things that we want to do with the HIV program. So that essentially has become the spirit of the alignment. Um, we share responsibility in that way. It's now everybody's collective responsibility, and we're essentially on the table implementing one national program, and that's what we've gotten out of it. Though talks about the national alignment has been on for some time, it didn't come online until about two years ago. In Nigeria, for at the moment, the HIV response is mainly um, resourced by the government of Nigeria the U.S. government and the Global Fund. However, U.S. government has the highest proportion, you know, in terms of resources supporting the, the national response to HIV, and then Global Fund and then Government of Nigeria. And um, each of these players have their own different business models, if you, if you like. Uh, sometimes when, you, when we review our programs, we realize that there are some disparities in terms of um, package of service from the U.S. government vis-à-vis -vis that of the government of Nigeria and the Global Fund. And we felt 
if we are serving the same individual, the same population within the country, then the quality should actually be the same. The package of service should be the same, irrespective of who is funding it. And um, that's how we started discussing, you know, to say, okay, we need to come together to have an alignment, national alignment of the HIV program, where um, everybody will come together, pull their resources together in one pool, and deliver the services to the, to the people who need it under the national program under the leadership of NACA and Federal Ministry of Health, which is in charge of the health sector response, but the partners are now behind providing that support. So essentially, that's the that's the history and the principle of um, of the National Alignment Program on HIV. After the NICE, after the NICE survey, again, the NICE survey itself was a pulled effort from the three partners. So the alignment, what the alignment didn't actually start today, because we all came together to fund the NICE and implement it together. But after the NICE, we, we, we now had intel knowledge about, you know, in terms of the geography and in terms of populations also, where the HIV epidemic was really raging in the country. And uh, thinking about trying to get ahead of the epidemic, um, we realized that what needed to happen is that, though we had, you know, we didn't have all the resources, but we needed to prioritize those places that had the worst epidemic because they were essentially going to be the fuel for the epidemic going forward. So a few states were identified um, that had the biggest epidemic, the biggest unmet needs, um, basically the number of people um, projected who were HIV positive but did not yet have access to treatment. Um, and PEPFAR launched what we call the surge, treatment surge. So in essence, focusing resources that way allowed us to demonstrate that it was possible to reach huge numbers of people in a very short period of time. Given that for probably 15 years before we got to the surge agenda, we had accumulated about 700,000 people on treatment. But in two years, we took that number from 700,000 people to about 1.1 million people on treatment. So learning from the PEPFAR experience, it was thought that since PEPFAR already had um, a very successful model of getting and finding people on treatment, we should become primarily the, the boots on ground. So a lot of the Global Fund sites were handed over to the PEPFAR implementing partners. A lot of, you know, Abia and Taraba that was previously being managed by the government was also handed over to PEPFAR implementing partners with the intention that they will be able to take what they had learned out of the surge experience across the country. Um, in doing that, there was a need also to find the resources to, to make sure that commodities were available to service those who are being found. We needed commodities to make sure we, we test those who are accepted to be tested. We needed um, ARVs, um, antiretroviral treatment, to make sure that we're able to put on treatment those who are found to be HIV positive, and therefore nobody is left lagging. So the contribution of the government and the Global Fund essentially moved strategically towards funding more, funding a lot more in terms of commodity needs. Um, PEPFAR still putting what he had in commodities, but now being the significant boots on ground in terms of the treatment program, to a large extent also the prevention program, especially as it affects key population. While Global Fund still maintains footprint in that area, um, it's much smaller. And it's also something that helps us to ensure that we have standardization in our um, service delivery. Harmonized key population service packages of the federal government, Global Fund and PEPFAR contributed significantly in improving the HIV cascade year by year in the country. Well, what, one thing that we have noticed with the alignment is that the coming together and looking at what we do and looking at areas of expertise and strength for each group, we now reassign roles and responsibilities. You're very good at providing clinical services. We allow you to provide the clinical services all over the country. You're very good at procurement and logistic management. We allow you to do the procurement and manage logistics with all the resources that you have. That way, we're getting more value for money. We've seen a remarkable increase in terms of number of people we are identifying and we are linking to care. One, because more resource is made available now um, because the duplication is 
identified and is taken care of. So funds are released to add in terms of the number we have. Um, second, there are um, programs that are not accounted for before and now we're getting to take account of them. Meaning there are individuals that are receiving services in some facilities, probably private facilities, faith-based facilities that are not captured in our radar. So now we get them captured in our radar. So because of that, the number that we identify and the number we treat has tremendously increased. Now, in the short time we've done it, um, just two years, we've also massively now grown the um, treatment coverage. Right now, um, we have about 1.8 million people on treatment. A lot of those people, a significant proportion of them, um, as I said before, just again recently found through just in the recent period that we implemented this alignment. So the alignment even allowed Nigeria to be one of the only countries that even during the COVID epidemic, the raging COVID epidemic and all the lockdowns and all the challenges that the rest of the world was having, were one of the only countries that continued to grow our HIV program even during, during the COVID epidemic. And that is a success that the whole world has come to recognize and uh, really applaud the country for. Um, but we achieved that because we were able to come together as stakeholders under this alignment framework. So now that we've done it for the treatment program, we're also thinking about how to also align other aspects of our programs, how to other, um, other aspects of the investments that are available. Um, it's a big country, despite the huge amount of resources that are available from all these partners, it's still not enough to watch to meet all of the needs of the HIV program. So the alignment allows gives us an opportunity to think strategically about how we prioritize resources and the limited resources that are available to make sure they achieve the outcomes that we desire. And like I said, it's been a fantastic success so far. And we look to see how else we can also um, expand the alignment conversation. But some gaps in the national HIV response, if not addressed, threatens to roll back achievements made over time. Alignment actually has what I would call the, the three pillars, all right? One supply chain system, one data system, and the last, the third leg is coordination. Coordination, all right? Which role, that coordination role must be played by the government. And that coordination includes joint planning. It includes uh, managing the program over time and ensuring that um, the health system is robust enough to sustain you know, all the programs beyond donor support. What it means is also that beyond alignment at national level, the states, subnational level entities have a critical role to play. So that bit, that third leg, we, we haven't done very well, in my opinion. For maybe obvious reasons you ask me, that it's about system building, which will take a longer time to mature, okay? Stakeholder engagement is involved, consensus building is involved, capacity building is also involved. And these things actually will take some bit of time. And I think that should be our focus, you know, particularly within the next funding cycle. Or even starting from now, we don't have to wait because uh, without that, sustainability is jeopardized, okay? Ownership is questioned also, all right? Ownership both at national and subnational level. The HIV alignment agreement between the government of Nigeria, PEPFAR and Global Fund has enhanced availability of and access to HIV services improved quality of services and strengthened health information systems and the role of non-state actors in healthcare. Optimization for quality, improved quality, and also um, rapid coverage, because we realized that when we started doing that, um, the resources we have, if it was going to take us through eight to 10 states, it was able to take us through more than eight to 10 states. So because you gain efficiency through optimization and that way you move faster. And also the strategies that uh, is working under the PEFA program, for example, or under the Global Fund program, for example, we now adopted it as a national strategy and 
spread it across board. So that way, we're able to close gaps faster. And what this does is, it is bringing us closer to controlling the epidemic. Because epidemic control is all about identifying individuals that live with the virus and keeping the virus within them, not letting the virus move around to affect people that don't have the virus in them. And in that respect, we, uh, we have estimated the last uh, two, three years when we did this survey all over the country, and the number that live with HIV in Nigeria is barely around 2 million. Out of that 2 million, we've successfully identified 1.8 to date. So, give and take, we have 200,000 to 300,000, at most 400,000 more to go uh, in terms of the number of people we need to identify for us to look back and say we are confident that over 95% of people that live with this virus in Nigeria have been identified. And over 95% of those that know they have HIV in them are now receiving life-saving medication that is helping to deny the virus opportunity to grow within people that live, which means it's helping to keep the virus within this individual. And we can also say that over 95% of people who are taking this medication to help fight the virus, the, the, the medication is succeeding in fighting the virus. The virus is actually kept low, um, uh, it, it is suppressed and it is not moving, which means um, infection cannot happen from this particular individuals, which means over 95% of people who have the virus are not giving it out to others. Those that are given out are negligible, maybe 2%, 3%, um, which over time, they will be identified in our routine care services. But we are not likely to see large number coming and adding into the number of people that already exist that have the virus in. Much work has been done in the fight against HIV AIDS in Nigeria. However, more work needs to be done. Together, we can end AIDS by the year 2030, even amidst coronavirus pandemic. Educate yourself. This is crucial in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Get tested. The only way to know for certain your status and stop the spread. Get involved. People with HIV and AIDS need care and support. Say no to stigma. Stigma prevents people from getting tested and those living with HIV from treatment. Spread the word. The more we educate others about the disease, the better we can fight it. Adhere to COVID-19 prevention protocols, wear a face mask, and maintain physical distance in public places. Remember, only united can we defeat HIV to finish and end AIDS by the year 2030. Get tested today. Let's fight HIV to finish in Nigeria. or in this case three are indeed better than one update segment is next keep watching the national gender and human rights technical working group is one of the platforms used in coordinating the national hiv and aid response in nigeria it brings together stakeholders from relevant partners ministries departments and agencies communities of people living with hiv faith-based organizations, among others. We bring everybody together quarterly to update our sense of the national response, what we are doing, what are the acti uh, activities that we have identified, we pre-planned to track them, to also share best practices, to share lessons learned, to document experiences and track what we are doing. And specifically to ensure there is alignment between what different partner resources is doing, especially as regard to gender and human rights related interventions. So we do this quarterly to keep ourselves abreast of the response and also to ensure that we are all together, we are on the same page in delivering that target of um, ending it in Nigeria as part of the global community. Speaking further, 
the Deputy Director, Community Prevention, Care and Support Services, NACA, stated the purpose of the session. So, um, in, uh, when we develop programs, we, it's also part of programming to develop how to monitor and evaluate that, those programs. So, for our programming intervention in HIV response, it's divided into two apps, the S sector component of data management uh, system and non S sector component, which also deals with issue, uh, what we do in the community, especially now in this case around gender and human rights. So, we develop indicators, we develop information management through packing tools, data collection tools, and that is one of the activities we are um, updating, reviewing. So we just completed, we are completing the process of developing indicators and information management tools to track gender and human rights related activities. So our research and monitoring team, they are sharing with the technical working groups what they are buying and to prepare them for rollout. So that is what everybody will be keen into to help us track uh, the activities, gender and human rights related activities in the national response. So it was presented to the technical committee for ratification and in preparation for rollout. Technical platforms such as the National Gender and Human Rights Technical Working Group are essential to the national HIV response. Ah ah, sister! Ah, where you they rush they go like this now? Take a missy now! Now all streets where they go to do HIV test. Hmm. Now everything you they do HIV test. Before you carry belly, you do HIV test. Now you they rush go do another HIV test. What you they find? You go see a mo. No be so, my sister. Eh? HIV test no be bad thing. Now make I know my status so that no matter the result, my Piki no go get HIV. Eh? HIV people pass from mama to Piki. Yes, so during pregnancy or labor or even when we they breastfeed the Piki. Eh? Yes, and my husband they road they come say if you go meet me for hospital, we go do the test together. Hey, your husband, my money be. <laughs> But wait though, when I know the fear, what if the results come out positive? Fear it in now. HIV no be death sentence. And medicine don't dare to take manager. See, nowadays people will get HIV. They live their life normal like everybody else. You should say I'm not gonna follow you, go do my own soul. Wait till you wait for now. Come make me go, Jare. With quick action, we fit stop this HIV worker from Mama to Pekin. Go do your own HIV test today. For more information on HIV and AIDS and related diseases, or to report suspected cases of stigma and discrimination, violence and human rights violation, please call the National Call Centre, toll free on 6222. Reach us via social media at National Call Centre or email callcentre at naca.gov.ng and visit our website on naca.gov.ng. Thanks for watching and as always continue to support the HIV response. Do not stigmatize or discriminate people living with HIV. Avoid indiscriminate sex. And lastly, know your status and take action. Till next week on The Last Mile with NACA, I am Adesu Walsi. Goodbye.